Hello everyone, thank you for welcoming me and for taking an interest in the subject of my communication as part of the International Conference of Contemporary Affairs in Architecture and Urbanism. My name is Nabil Rubai Shorfi, architect and teacher at the Abdel Hamid Ibn Badis University of Mostaganem in Algeria. I'm pleased to present my contribution entitled Reading the Colonial Space Through Non-Normative Resources an educational experience in the construction of meaning. The subject of my presentation concerns the use of unusual resources in urban analysis. What we are going to show you here is an educational experience that we conducted with architecture students in an urban planning workshop at the architecture department of the University of Mostaganem. Our presentation has two levels. The first level of reading concerns the experience itself and what it provoked as questions among students about the interpretation of perceptions of space, its experience, but also projections of users and their dreams. The other level concerns a distant observation of our teaching practice through a reflexive practice which attempts to test our position as mediator between knowledge and the learner. First, I will explain the practical objective of the exercise that we conducted and the case on which we worked. In an analysis phase of a given urban fragment which was to lead students to an urban restructuring project, we asked them to go beyond the process of identifying certain known and already experienced dysfunctions. They had to pay particular attention to the historical factors which continue to influence the pre preconceptions, the stigmatizations of certain districts of the city centre and the ruptures experienced by the inhabitants. The objective is to encourage them to explore significant data without it being readable and identifiable at first sight. It's a question of going beyond the objective data which one generally finds on explicit supports such as maps, statements or plans accompanying the usual urban planning tools. It's therefore subjective data from several media. The underlying objective is to deconstruct the pre-learning of students by pushing them to reformulate the initial problem by being open to latent factors of sensitivity and emotivity in the user's experience. Before that, I will briefly describe the constitution of the city of Mostagana, as this will help you to understand the rest of our experience and appreciate the quality of the unusual resources that will help us with a particular reading of the evolution of this city. Mostaganem is originally a Berber and Arab city, which underwent several influences of which it kept the traces. From Arab Kasbah in the 16th century, it becomes a Turkish fortification sheltering a fort, districts and dependencies. Then from 1830, a European city centre opening onto the sea by a port and extending through a great plan over a multitude of new districts. And finally, an Algerian city reconquered in 1962. Since independence, it has been the subject of varied and sometimes contradictory and criticizable urban policies. But what particularly interests us in the city is the conditions for the emergence of its current center, an area called El Bled, which means the city. The central plate evolves on a morphological particularity drawn by the Wadi, Ain Safa, which shelters between its loops two dual parts. The Arab Carter, which has kept traces of agricultural plots dating back to the Middle Ages, and the fortified Turkish Carter placed high up on the other bank of the Wadi. Finally, the colonial city centre itself, with its checkered urban fabric and Haussmann architecture. After a purely French sprawl of the city, we observe manifestations of modern architecture corresponding to the plan of Constantine, a late colonial policy supposed to reintegrate the predominantly rural Muslims into large urban housing complexes, but also the post-independence extensions influenced by the eastern countries of the 1960s. The city centre of Mostaganem, in its current configuration, corresponds to the first fragment that appears on this aerial view. On this aerial view. It consists of four entities. The city centre proper, called Bled, and which contains a typically European architecture, but especially a checkered fabric disobedient to the natural morphology. A pre-colonial district called Tobana, which takes the same configuration but which is now to be the place of the urban Arabs originating in Andalusia, Hadab and the Kurugli, population resulting from the Turkish Arab mix. A Turkish district called Dirk, which has kept some traces of Ottoman 
fortified town planning with patio houses, reticulated framework, narrow alleys, but whose facades and building fronts harbored the stigma stigmata of the European style remodeling. A Arab neighborhood physically separated from other neighborhoods by a wedding and which identifies itself as a twin city. All the interest of our experience with the students came from the distinction between the three entities formed by the colonial city center and the two Turkish districts on this one side and Arab Carter on the other. If the links between Turkish and French entities remain strong and continuous, both structurally and spatially, we notice a sequential rupture in their connection with the Arab Carter which, moreover, is only connected through a single axis. This French military map dating from before colonial urbanization clearly show this fact. A fortified Turkish carter which isolates the Arab carter. The red point indicates the only door crossing the wadi to lead to the Kasbah. The first observations indicate that the city has a dual center. The axis of reflection developed by the student led us to reflect on the implication of colonial urbanization strategies in the assimilation of certain existing urban fabrics while using regrouping policies for the natives. The first observations could be enough to establish a state of affairs of the dysfunctions, typomorphological analysis and mind maps, extension of duality among users, one territory, two cities or two societies, duality exacerbated by contradictory street structures opening and closing, sustainability through social and functional divisions. In any didactic approach, teaching practice is accompanied by a reflexive approach posed to provide solutions to the students' bypass strategies. Thus, faced with the difficulties encountered by students on a given problem, they will be tempted to, to work around the problem. Observing their behavior can help us approach a better formalization of the problem. The hypothesis is that the use of sensitive data basing the apprehension of living space on an experience will constitute a palliative to the documentary weakness in the interpretation of urban space among students. The aim of formative evaluation in our experience is to remedy the difficulties of constructing meaning which emerge from the first phase of analysis. These difficulties are seen in the superficiality of the results, physical reading, and the representational differences between the students' interpretation of physical reading. The probable cause, according to them, comes from the lack of resource as well as from the high level of subjectivity of the users questioned about their feelings concerning the space. In an intermediate phase, we proceed to retroactive remediation by asking them to respond to a logbook summarizing the steps of the analysis, then interactive by integrating the team with additional data. They are ignored resources, but the students would have rejected them from the start because they did not correspond to the idea of material words of analysis. Evolution is the act by which the teacher makes the student accept responsibility for a learning situation or a problem and himself accepts the sequences of this transfer. The students naturally started by looking for a match between their theor theoretical reading and their observations in situ. They thus had the idea that the configuration of the city of Mostaganem corresponds to the development plan typical of Algerian port cities as described by the urban planner Mark Cott. These cities grow in successive concentric cycles between mountain and sea. This historical development by sectors proceeding by excluding the density of the indigenous population towards confined spaces in favor of an elitist colonial space reflects the antagonism with the model of centrality and gradient of most cities in the world. Thus, the current space is considered as a composite result of a superposition of pre-colonial and colonial spaces. These are spatial and societal threats which testify to social practices and organizations and whose importance lies in their enduring effect. The first piece introduced is text taken from an autobiographical novel which recounts the journey of a young resident living in the western part of the city and his awakening to colonial conditions which led him to join the revolutionary troops. 
I will read now. <coughs> when we reach the top, we turn around. The city stretched out at our feet so beautiful to go from one district to another. It was enough to turn our heads. A few steps from us, covering the hill, the impressive fortress called the Faudelest, one of the many Turkish remains of our city. At the foot of the hill, it stretched gently down to the sea, most again. Lower down on our right was the Tijdit district, a white Kaspar like all Kaspars in Algeria. A city of cubic houses with whitewashed walls, narrow alleys, and adjoining terraces. Tijdit, it was the lower town. Its houses were used for housing, but also groceries, bakeries, Moorish baths, small restaurants, and other small shops, as well as so called Franco indigenous schools. Between the loops of the Ain Safa, which irrigate Mostagana, there are different districts, some surrounded by old ramparts built under the Turkish occupation. European looking neighborhoods were modern with streets and wide avenues. There were also sumptuous villas, imposing buildings. All the important public buildings were there. The lycée, the college, the post office, the church, the town hall, the court, the hospital, the banks, the station, covered market, the chamber of commerce, the prefecture and all the beautiful movie, cinema and theaters. In the suburbs, there were also the synagogue, the prison and the brothers. This passage had the effect of repositioning the students in the mixed apprehension of the spaces that they used to see only through maps and frames. A certain sensitivity was born and the interpretation of the feeling of duality existing in the city center no longer appeared as evidence but rather as a question, a phenomenon to be understood. It also implies a tenacious glimpse of colonial urbanization policy. A series of postcards taken from the same point of view made it possible to see the evolution of the colonial city center at a specific point in our fragment. You can identify an immutable element, the Protestant temple, the first colonial building. On the other hand, we will see the gradual dissolution of the fortification and the place of the door called the Mascara Gate. You will notice in return the evolution of the European city with the emergence of Haussmann steel buildings than Art Nouveau. In this card, the church with its bell tower sets the tone for the first temple and circumscribes the fragment to be invested. The Mascara Gate is still there. In this card, the straight avenue is drawn and buildings begin to appear. At the beginning of the 20th century, the avenue was completely traced and the trees hold of the Mascara door pressed. Half a century later, the wall has completely disappeared and the fragment resembles all European cities. Thus, on a succession of postcards, the students were able to decipher the process of creation of the colonial city center, which was to constitute a foundation of a calculated and irremediable extension. The creation of a first Protestant place of worship, corresponding to the first waves of settlers coming from the Strasbourg region building of a Catholic church in the Turkish parade grounds, then the creation of the first boulevard on Haussmannian basis. Finally, the gradual construction of buildings in the image of a progressive and civilized France, all in the genuine traces have thus disappeared. The discovery of duality goes through a series of postcards offering a picturesque atmosphere on the Arab Kasbah, with however a clear propensity to the confinement of the indigenous populations just like adapted equipment in the genius school and the genius cinema offering the luxury of the Arab Andalusian architectural style, but also the symbols of duality, the ravine profitable to the morphological and societal rupture, the rare passage allowing the Muslim population to go to work in the European city. A final non-normative resource is that of life stories collected from city users. This allowed students to probe the reception of the inhabitants with the symbolic dimensions of the space. This, for example, through a legend that continues around a blatant rupture in the colonial urban facades. The natives have always maintained that the axis connecting the mausoleums of two patron saints of the city was impossible to feel, as these two saints could not bear to part during their lifetime. Certain ancestral social practices, like the call of the funeral evenings, are still manifested in a mobilizing procession, which takes its departure from the center of the Arab city, a popular marketplace, and ends in the form of a sometimes massive gathering on the colonial public square. The impact of these resources is noticeable on the change in the perception of spaces that students rediscovered as new spaces, decoding in the sense of Edward T. Hall, 
no longer corresponds to the restitution of the original space because the user participates in its sensitivity, a collective memory, and its expectations. The meaning of the urban is defined beyond physical space, by constriction in a context. The receiver is located in space, time and society. The three components are extremely marked by urban episodes. If the perceived space gives us an impression of duality frozen by time, the lived space remains ambiguous and lets us think, no longer of the dual presence of two urban entities, but a single entity and at the same time equivocal that of otherness. After the emergence of this otherness theory, the students ended up reviewing the basic theoretical model. They thus arrived at a model of circumstance. From a typomorphological point of view, the students identify the tips of fabrics that form the composite fabric of the city, but they regulate this purely quantitative reading of space by an interpretative approach to space perception. Also, we will notice on the diagram that the Arab Quarter is represented as a different city, no longer dual and contradictory from the rest of the fabric but distinct and original. Subsequently, the dysfunction targeted by the objective of this analysis was treated in a vision of preservation of the urban entity, with these specificities and its heritage, cultural and urban potential. Students are open to concepts of meeting, spatial and social forms, a reference to the Chicago school. They deduced that the dysfunction which manifests itself by the aspect of perennial seclusion of the Arab Carter, in particular in the representations of the users, is not only due to spatial conjectures, but also and mainly from the phenomenon of reappropriation of the other place created by the colonial urbanization policy. This reappropriation focuses on colonial space at the expense of a return to the Arab city. The subject is still topical, and the policy currently applied on the reduction of precarious housing by the rehousing of the inhabitants of the Arab Carter followed by a systematic destruction of the old buildings had the effect of placing the problem in a more complex vision. The oppositions between the colonial and the traditional Western modernity and the Arab Muslim space does not seem to be effective. In conclusion, this experience allowed us to see two interesting lines of study. One concerned the educational sciences component by providing a point of view on formative evaluation in the context of urban reception. The other concerns the deepening of the analytical tools which, if they will be tested in a broader push framework from the case of the town of Mostagana then extended to the other Algerian towns suffering from the same pathology, would provide us with a palliative methodology. Thank you for your attention. I hope that my report was pleasant to you and that it opened up fields of possibility and reflection. It's for me a first experience of transition from French to English. I hope it was not unpleasant to hear. Thank you.